Pear in, I hope I'm saying that right, Pear in Gothenburg, Sweden, writes to me and he says, Paul, in your books and other media, you always mention the importance of adding subs as the final touch to a high-end setup. Yep, if you can. I agree to that, but keep wondering, why is it always a pair of subs? Y you never use singular. Do you mean that having just one is almost as having none? Or why is a pair the entry level of subs? I would love to hear you elaborate on that, please. Well, I am a big advocate of subwoofer pairs, which does and doesn't make sense. And so let me explain to you. And, and to answer your question directly, if you could only have one sub, is it better to not have subs at all? And the answer is no but you're gonna to have to take some different steps if you're only gonna have one sub. Okay, so let's go over the purpose of a subwoofer. The purpose of a subwoofer is to augment the main speakers. And our goal with a subwoofer is to not hear it. We want the main speakers to sound as if they had the extension that we wanted. Now, every speaker, of course, isn't full range, but take our FR30 speakers. We're in the main listening room here. The FR30s, they play down to about 23 hertz. That's really low. That's just above the limit of human hearing. So from a sound pressure level, from a authority level, those FR30s are about, you're not going to want to go a whole lot lower. It'll play the deepest pipe organs. Well, some of the pipe organs go down to 8 hertz. And no, they won't play that. <laughs> but it's pretty rare. For 99.9% .9 of all music, those FR30 speakers or their little brother, the FR20, more than adequate from a frequency response standpoint. The problem is the room. Okay, now when you come up here and hear the FR30s, where they are and where you are sitting is in such a place where most of the bottom end is lost. Unfortunately, we're working on that. I might even have to move the room because it's kind of a shame. Uh, people come here to hear those and they expect to hear 23 hertz and they don't. So our choice on that because of the room is to either add subwoofers, which we'll likely do at some point, and or we could choose to reposition the speakers. Unfortunately, the speakers are where they are because they work the best for everything else. So there's like, I, I call it my 90% solution. 90% of this is working great. 10% of it, the low end, and with a couple of bumps in, in the mid bass, aren't. And that's the room. We solve that by either <laughs> rebuilding the room or modifying it in some way, or simply adding subs. Now, if you put the subs in exactly the same place as the speakers, you won't accomplish anything. So the trick with the subwoofer, of course, is to put it somewhere else in the room because subwoofers don't really care so much where they are. You just wanna put it to the place where in this seat right here, you hear the strong bass that you want and you do it in a way that doesn't go so high in frequency to where you don't hear that. The reason I choose two subs over one is because a good sub not only fills in the areas of the room that the main speakers aren't producing, but it also provides uh, some low frequency pressure zones that you feel it. So, when we used to only have one sub, I would always put it on the right side of the speaker, off into the corner. And I did that because I listened to a lot of classical music. And typically, unless we, we've got, you know, um, oh, Mahler, with, as he likes to be a bit of a rebel and, and put the, the double basses on the left side, for the most part, double basses are always on the right side. So if you're gonna feel the bass and you're gonna feel the pressure, Put it onto the right side if it's a single subwoofer. You're always better off using two, but one is better than none. Okay, what else did we want to cover? Um, 
that's basically the reason why I encourage two. You get more coverage, it's more even, you never know where the bass is going to come. It usually is in the middle of most things. And if the frequency is low enough, then it doesn't become directional. The directionality of the bass comes from the upper regions as supplied by your main speaker. So <sighs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thanks. Bye.